Welcome to Portland, Oregon for a Pac-12 Big Ten matchup in the Pacific Northwest tonight where the undefeated number 15 Oregon Ducks take on the 9-1 Fighting Illini of the University of Illinois. From the Moda Center in Portland, home of the NBA's Portland Trailblazers, welcome to Jimmy B. Week for Cancer Research on ESPN as we continue our commitment to the B Foundation and Jim Valvano's dream to defeat cancer. Along with former UCLA captain Sean Farnham, Roxy Bernstein with you, two teams that have a lot of newcomers are still trying to figure out exactly what they have. Well, it's about the transfers. Both these teams have benefited a great deal because of transfers, and you've seen that chemistry really gel early, a combined only one loss between these two programs. Well, two contrasting styles will go at it here in Portland. Take us to the one-on-one. -on -one. Well, if you look at tonight's one-on-one, -on -one, it is completely different styles and secrets to success. When you look at the Illini, they want to keep it close, and they want to keep it under the 70s. They're 9-3 and three in the last two years under Coach Gross in games decided by five or fewer points. Meanwhile, for the Oregon Ducks, they're hosting the national championships in track and field till 2021. They want to make it a track meet here tonight. They're playing in the 90s. Starting five for the 8-0 Oregon Ducks. Damian Dotson, the three-guard alignment with Jonathan Lloyd playing at a really high level. Joseph Young, Mike Moser, and Waverly Austin, the starting five for Oregon. For the fighting Illini of Illinois. Tracy Abrams, the point guard, Ravante Rice, Joseph Bertrand, John Eakey, the transfer from Illinois State, and Nana Agwu, the center for Illinois. The Fighting Illini, 9-1, Oregon. The 15th ranked Ducks at 8-0. They're wearing the lightning yellows. They turned it and the navy blue on the road for the Fighting Illini. And it would be an interesting beginning, an interesting 40 minutes of basketball, Sean, because we're playing this game in an NBA arena and there's no college halo or the semicircle underneath the basket for the block charge as you see it on your screen. That's the NBA one. Right, and the officials noticed it right away. The facilities management were not here with the appropriate tape to fix it. There's a difference of a foot. The NBA is at four feet radius. Meanwhile, the college radius is down to three feet. Both coaches agreed for this game to play with it as is and start the game on time. But this officiating crew was on it from the start when they showed up in the building. And a very good crew of David Hall, Mike Cyphers, Randy Hyreman working this matchup. Again, the Big Ten Conference against the Pac-12 in Portland, a semi-neutral side game. The pull-up jumper, Ravante Rice missing the offensive rebound. Nana Egwu for Illinois. Joseph Bertrand a three. And the rebound cleared by Oregon. They look to push. In transition, you have to have an awareness for Illinois. They have got to get back with a sense of urgency and purpose. The Ducks can fly. Damian Dotson into the basket, and he's called for a walk and a turnover by Oregon. Sometimes in these neutral site games, it gets a little ragged at the start. Full court pressure from Oregon. One thing about the Illini, they, they play with this smaller lineup, and that benefits them when they're playing a team with the versatility like Oregon has. Illinois' only loss coming in the ACC Big Ten Challenge earlier this season to Georgia Tech, a narrow loss in Atlanta. In a game where they really struggled to score the basketball down the stretch. Tracy Abrams hits the three. The last six games, just 22% from behind the arc for Abrams. He needs to get going from the outside and a good start for him there. And the junior from Chicago breaks the seal, gives Illinois the initial lead. Joseph Young, the transfer from Houston. Shot clock at 15. Jonathan Lloyd finds Damian Dotson. He drives. Lays it in. A beautiful hesitation, and then the explosive first step clears out space, and Dotson is the finisher for the Ducks. John Eakey to pull up. Too strong, Joseph Young clears. And here come the Fighting Ducks of Oregon. At least that's what the uniform says tonight. I'm Dana Altman. They've been fighting for national reputation as far as being the top tier team in the Pac-12 and they have been every bit of it. Mike Moser missing and the rebound cleared by Ravante Rice in Illinois. Last year Oregon going to the Sweet 16, a good run in the NCAA tournament. Rice missing a three. I think he's 
Ill advised there. He's, he took that one from beyond the NBA three, and that's one of the things when you have two lines on the floor, you have to have an awareness of where you are. Jonathan Lloyd looking for contact, missing. Revante Rice attacks. Nana Engel underneath. Spins out. Waverly Austin clears for Oregon. Great dump down pass. But Egu unable to corral it in cleanly. If he had, he would have been able to finish that one. Jonathan Lloyd, nice pass. Waverly Austin gets the roll. Oregon's first lead. Lloyd has been so key for the Ducks in the early stages of this season. Distributing the basketball, being the facilitator and the leader out on the floor, obviously without Dominic Artis. And this surge by Jonathan Lloyd, Sean, really started toward the end of last season. Who shined at the Pac-12 tournament where he was named the tournament MVP. And of course, Artist, this is the final game of his suspension along with Ben Carter. After some poor decisions in the offseason. Joseph Young for the Ducks as both Ben Carter and Dominic Artis serving a nine-game suspension for violating NCAA rules and selling teams issued apparel is why they're serving the nine games. This is game number nine. Joseph Young for downtown. And the rebound, Waverly Austin hustles, losing control, and Illinois claims it. Illinois is so tough, and they compete so hard at the defensive end of the floor. Very different team than what they had a year ago. Joseph Bertrand attacks. What a move on the baseline to get up into the rim. Bertrand averaging about 11 points per game. An aggressive athletic player that can attack off the wing as you saw right there. Here's Young creating with five of the shot clock. Jonathan Lloyd from the corner. Now not, not just a distributor, also. Shooting the ball with better confidence, 47% on the season from behind the arc. Coming off a monster game at Ole Miss last Sunday where the Ducks survived an overtime thriller, 115-105, and Lloyd at 23 points and 15 assists in that game. Foul against Oregon. An early start, but aggressive and attacking offense from both teams. First, it's Dotson. Watch a little elevate, a little hesitation. And then the flare to the finish, but Bertrand says, you want to finish around the rim. This is how we do it in the Big Ten. Good start here in Portland. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Infinity. Luxury cars that deliver inspired performance. And Wendy's, proud sponsor of the 2014 John R. Wooden Men's Player of the Year Award.
We're at the Moda Center in Portland, home of the NBA's Portland Trailblazers for this Pac-12 Big Ten matchup, number 15 Oregon. That's a 7-5 lead of Illinois. Now, earlier, we told you about it before, where there is no college semicircle for the block charge. There is David Hall, the lead official, working with Mike Cyphers and Randy Heiberman, talking to both coaches, Dane Altman and John Gross, about that specific lack of a college loop underneath the basket, the semicircle. They're using the NBA one here, which is, what, a foot difference? It's a foot different all the way around. The, the NCAA college basketball is a three-foot radius. The NBA is a four-foot radius, and you know, both coaches agreed to play under the NBA line today because the facilities did not have it readily available. And, and I credit this officiating crew. As soon as they came out on the floor, they recognized that there was a problem. Uh, they addressed it with the people here at the facility just unable to get it done in time. Mike Seifer uh, and this crew has just done an excellent job communicating with us, communicating with the coaches, and they agreed upon it. And both John Gross and Dan Altman wanted to get into the flow and get this game going, didn't want to disrupt their pregame routine leading up to tip off. Well, if, if, because of the lack of facilities and, and awareness of being able to get down on the floor, it would have delayed the tip at least 15, maybe 20 minutes. And then the teams would have to go back in the locker room, then re-warm up. And I, I think both coaches made the right decision. Off the inbound, John Eakey long on a three. Offensive rebound, Joseph Bertrand hustles for the fighting Illini. Jalen Tate in, a freshman from Chicago. He's got the ball out top against the Oregon zone. Jason Calise, to transfer from Detroit, checks in for Oregon. Also in is Richard Amarty. Jalen Tate missing the three, the offensive rebound. Freshman Maverick Morgan. He's starting to foul against Oregon. Starting to earn some quality minutes for the Illini. And a good job getting on the offensive glass that time with the rebound. First on Jason Kalist, second on the Ducks. So both teams going into their bench here early in this matchup. Joseph Bertrand off the inbound. Offensive foul called against Illinois, the first on Bertrand. And dipping the shoulder in, initiating the contact. A good call on that one, driving the lane. A, little, a lot of times with the rules of freedom of movement, if you're smart offensively, you're trying to dip that shoulder down. You don't want to lift out your, old, your elbow, but you want to dip that shoulder into the player. And you can more often than not get away with it, but a good job by this crew, once again, staying on top of it. Joseph Young losing control, hustling. Joseph Bertrand takes it away for Illinois. It seems like every 50-50 ball right now is being gathered in by the Illini. Levante Rice attacks and lays it in, and we're tied at seven. Quickly, Oregon pushes. That's the pace they want to play at. Here's early, Sean, that Illinois is winning the pace battle in the way they want this game play. Well, what did Coach Gross tell us before the game? He says it, he reminded his guys of the movie The Fugitive that starred Harrison Ford. He said, you've got to run like Harrison Ford when Tommy Lee Jones was chasing him in The fu Fugitive. You've got to have a paranoia to get back at the defensive end of the floor. Well, it's I, fitting because that movie was based around the city of Chicago. Well, I quickly asked Coach, how many of your players have seen the movie The Fugitive? And Coach, always utilizing outside sources to help motivate his team and, and to drive home a point of emphasis. You limit the Ducks and make them play in the half-court set. You know, they have only once this season scored under 70 points in a game. And that was against Utah Valley. Every other game, they have just been flying up and down the basketball court. Including three times they've reached the century mark so far this season. They give it away, Illinois basketball. This game is definitely being pay played at the pace that Illinois wants it to be at. Illinois is a good defensive team. They are not a great offensive team yet. Very different from a year ago where they relied on the three-point shot. Richard Amarty to steal. Joseph Young attacks. Gets the roll and one, Joseph Young. And, and for the Oregon Ducks, they've struggled to get out in transition. One way to facilitate the opportunity to get in the open floor is by creating the turnover, playing the passing lane. This was a lazy pass by Tate, and it goes the other direction. Elevate, hang, and finish. First foul on John Eakey. And Joseph Young for the and one free throw. 83% foul shooter on the year. Rattles out, and the rebound, John Eakey at Illinois. Brought back from the pressure that time.
Rivante Rice again gets to the basket. Yeah, how big an impact has he had for the Illini this season already? Uh, and in this game, two of four, but both those two made field goals. Last couple times he's had the ball in his hands. He turned that corner and is attacking the interior credits or lack thereof for the University of Oregon. He sat out last year as a transfer from Drake and had maybe one of the most productive redshirt seasons ever. In fact, he was so good last year in practice that John Gross named him the most improved player on the team despite never playing a minute all season. John Inkey gives Illinois the lead. And he can stretch you from the outside. Had three three-pointers last time out against Dartmouth. And a couple of those came in pivotal moments. Five straight points for the fighting Illini. Mike Moser from the corner rattles out the three. John Eke the rebound for Illinois. Maverick Morgan inside. All predicated upon the dribble penetration of Rice, the defense reacting to it, opening up the backside. Joseph Young count the basket again. He is fouled and will go to the line. The Oregon Ducks led by their backcourt. Sean Farnham breaks down the three-guard attack of the Oregon Ducks straight ahead. Illinois surprising number 15 Oregon in the first half in Portland and Oregon the second highest scoring team in the country Sean take us inside the play what Oregon tries to do with their three guard attack well they are always attacking from the outside let's first talk about Jonathan Lloyd on the outside you see him with the ball here against Georgetown he's going to swing it into the corner he's a playmaker and facilitator of the offense yes he can score but he's at his best with building chemistry with this group the back line of the defense you see it right here he's going to step to Jonathan Lloyd there's the dunk down pass underneath creating an opportunity to get an easy layup and Jonathan Lloyd does an excellent job of this. Once again, you're going to see Lloyd force the back line of defense. Step two, create space for Joseph Young. He is the shooter out of the group, and it is wide open over here as the back line defense has to make a decision again who they're going to guard, and Young can make it from the outside. And then when you talk about finishers, you've got to talk about Dotson. He is so cagey around the rim. We've already seen it in this contest in his aggressive drive off the baseline. These are the numbers for the season. You see the numbers of assists for Lloyd. He is the facilitator, but the others, they can just flat out get it done. And that's why Dan Altman's team has had such great success in this early stages. And it's a deep backcourt also when they look at the reserves coming off the bench. Jason Police, and it will only get better after this game when Dominic Artis becomes eligible again for Dan Altman. And it might cause a little bit of rotational changes as far as the number of minutes the players are getting. Uh, but obviously, you want the best players to be part of the program. You want to work it back in. These guys have been able to practice. They have not been able to play. And Coach Dan Altman told us beforehand, he didn't think that it was going to be that big of an adjustment for the guys on the roster. Yeah, he didn't seem so concerned about it. Maybe a little bit of an adjustment period. 
but it's a nice problem to have if you're Dana Altman. Tracy Abrams back in the game. As deflected by Elgin Cook, who checked in for Oregon. Against the Ducks defense, though, you've got to make crisp passes. You cannot throw soft passes and just careless mistakes like that one right there. Malcolm Hill can't handle the pass and a giveaway for Illinois. There is Dominic Gardis, the starting point guard as a freshman last year for Oregon. And he'll be back in that role, contributing for this team in the near future. Jason Kalis to the basket, spins out. Has it stripped. Here comes Tracy Abrams for the lineup. Abrams for three. Too strong. He runs down his own miss. And he actually is backing up, and the ball just bounced to him. And the Ducks have to do a better job shoring up their defensive loss. That's four offensive rebounds in the early stages of this game. Illinois doing an outstanding job on the board so far as the runner spins out for Kendrick Nunn. Oregon clears. Elgin Cook losing the handle. Picked up by Tracy Abrams. Abrams to the basket. Offensive rebound and the putback by Nana Egwu. Competing, staying with it. And Egwu, a nice job. Getting his hands ready, corralling that offensive rebound and putting it back in. Jonathan Lloyd hits the jumper. Dana Altman is very intense on the sideline right now. Talking about the need to improve at this end of the floor. A little added toughness. Midway through the first half here in Portland. Number 15, Oregon and Illinois. To the basket, the roll for Joseph Bertrand. It is wide open spaces in the paint for the Illini. And continually attacking the Ducks de defense by driving to the middle. Richard Amarty, too strong. And the rebound, Nana Engwu in Illinois. Bertrand to the basket, a block is called on Jonathan Lloyd, his first. Top women's basketball programs in the nation headline ESPN's primetime coverage for Jimmy B. Classic Tuesday. Number one, UConn against number two, Duke. Then on ESPN, the Panthers face the Bearcats at seven at nine. Number 19, Florida. Battle number 16, Memphis. UConn Duke, they headline it. The women number one against number two, the Jimmy B. Classic presented by Corona. Tuesday at ESPN and ESPN2. All games also live on Watch ESPN. We saw the two stars and how about the UConn women's program? The, the level of consistency, the high level of consistency, year in and year out, they're competing for national championship. Many undefeated seasons, they overcome injuries, they've got great players, great depth, and of course, a great coach. To the basket, the floater, no good for Jalen Tate, and Oregon with the rebound. But look at the defensive transition. This is not what we're used to seeing out of Oregon. They're playing in the half-court set in the early stage of this game, not being able to get those three easy lanes where they're getting the defense on their heels. Right now, it's the defense of the Illini that's the aggressor. The will of the fighting Illini, winning the tempo battle here at Portland. Damian Dodson for three. That's flanked off the heel of the rim. <laughs> Illinois has to be pleased with the first 11 plus minutes of this game. Okay. Offensive foul. Clear illegal screen. You extend out your elbow. That's an easy one to call. But no, I, I would agree, agree with you. Coach Gross has got to be very pleased with the tempo of this game, the execution defensively, how they have taken the Ducks out of their ability to make that transition. Marshall Henderson said that Oregon is the fastest team that they have played uh, at his time at Ole Miss, and it has not been the fast, up pace offense, up tempo offense of Oregon right now in the early stages of this game. 15th foul in Illinois, the first on Nana Egwu, who checks out. Maverick Morgan with two fouls back in the game. Driving the lane, off balance runner. The roll for Elgin Cook. The last three games playing much better with improved confidence. Averaging almost 13 points per game over that stretch. The depth of this Oregon Ducks team, I think, gets overlooked a lot. 
Morgan Cook's dad, Alvin Robertson, four-time NBA All-Star. Lockdown defender he was. Levante Rice to the basket. Can't get the spin to fall. And John Eakey called, rather a foul against Oregon. John Eakey will go to the free throw line. The one thing you have to adjust to right now for the Oregon Ducks is boxing out and getting a rebound. They've allowed the Illini too many second chance looks. Scott Miles Simon back here in the studio updating you on a piece of history in Columbus, Ohio. Aaron Kraft inside to the Quinton Ross and Kraft now the all time assist leader at Ohio State, breaking Jamar Butler's mark of 579. The journey to the tourney continues on ESPN with Jordan Adams and the Bruins head to Madison Square Garden to take on Jabari Parker and the Blue Devils. ESPN's journey to the tourney. UCLA against number eight Duke Thursday at 7.30 on ESPN. Also live on Watch ESPN. The tight programs in college basketball going at uh, two of the historic programs really in college basketball and the Pac-12 has had some signature wins already this season. Obviously Arizona beating Duke in Madison Square Garden knocking off Michigan today at Michigan Colorado beating Kansas. But for UCLA the opportunity on a neutral floor to have an opponent like Duke if they knock them off what a big feather in the cap that would be for the Pac-12 who is really ascending up the conference ranks as far as the depth to this conference this year. The Pac-12 is back. It is competitive. I don't think it's as strong as the Big Ten overall. I think the Big Ten is number one in the country right now. But the Pac-12, you can make a statement that they're on the move. John Eakey at the line. Banks in the first one. Shooter touch. <laughs> He'll take it. One more coming for the transfer from Illinois State. And Oregon had a great win in the Armed Forces Classic against Georgetown and South Korea. Eakey hits both, but the win today for Arizona to come from 11 down in the second half in Ann Arbor to knock off number 25 Michigan. And we, we focus so much on Aaron Gordon for Arizona, but Brandon Ashley played a big part of that win today. The execution on the outside, T.J. McConnell, his ball control and understanding time and possession and how to distribute the ball to find his teammates. And then Nick Johnson, who I think is clearly the best player right now on the Arizona Wildcats roster overall. Second foul of Joseph Bertrand, sixth against the fighting Illini. And he was impressed by Sean Miller's strategy. Sean, at the end of that game, the way he maneuvered that last couple of minutes for Arizona was very impressive. And the decision to foul was the right decision. Of course, you go back to Xavier taking on Ohio State. 
Uh, the decision was not to foul in that instance. Learning from that experience, changing your philosophy. A good job, some great coaching across the landscape of college basketball. Sean Miller's one of the best. Damian Dotson, the jumper, and he hits. There's the Big Ten trying to get even here with the Pac-12, and Illinois with a two-point lead still. A good execution that time in the half-court set there. Dotson very comfortable, especially inside that three-point arc. And a foul. Five-second violation. John Gross was trying to get a timeout. And Coach Gross upset that he was not granted that timeout. He was clearly calling for it before the travel was called. And you know, coaches have that sense, that understanding of, hey, things aren't going well right now. We, we are out of sorts. Let's simmer it down. Mike Moser has his pass deflected and a foul trying to get the loose ball. And it's against Oregon and Damian Dotson for grabbing John Eakey. First on Dotson. You know, that's the one thing I think if you look at this Illini team this season in particular, Roxy, is last year's team was predicated upon right now coming back from Maui. It was about the, the sizzle and the pop of the three-point shot. This year's team is about the substance of the defensive end of the floor. You have a turnover, create a turnover, get a foul at this end of the floor. Don't allow them to get a good shot up. Hustle and compete, and that's been the mantra this year for Illinois. Plus the great non-conference win just over a year ago here in the Northwest at Gonzaga, where both teams were unbeaten going into that matchup. Joseph Young on the drive. Anna Agu controls. Jalen Tate missing the runner. The game's starting to speed up a little bit to Oregon's liking. You have to be careful if you're Tate in that instance. It's a one on two. You're the one going against two. Settle it down, establish your offense, and keep this a slow pace. So far, only two fast break points in this game. Both come from Oregon. And a foul off the ball as Mike Moser trying to cut. And John Eakey called for his second. That one puts Oregon into the bonus, the 17th foul on Illinois. So Eakey has two, Maverick Morgan with two, Joseph Bertrand with two fouls for Illinois. Eakey will sit. Mike Moser to the line, 63% on the season. He had a tough go last year at UNLV after an honorable mention all of America performance two years ago for the running rebels. Well, he has been a player that's been well traveled over his college career. Started at UCLA, then transferred to UNLV, sat out a year, then became an honorable mention all American, the Portland native out of Grant High School. And then you take a look at the accolades, you see it all down at the bottom of your screen. When you're when you're an honorable mention All-American, I mean, that has some weight to it. The numbers dipped a season ago at UNLV. Uh, and he has found a new home once again, this time up in Eugene. He said, look, I, I put pressure on myself every day to get back to the numbers that I had as a sophomore at UNLV. He goes, but I've also learned in the early stage of the season to trust my teammates and take advantage of the opportunities when I have them. Jalen Tate to the basket, missing. And the rebound, Mike Moser in Oregon. Moser has graduated from UNLV, takes advantage of the graduate transfer rule. Short on a three, and the rebound, Tracy Abrams for the fighting Illini. Now settle this down if you're Illinois. You're, you're, you're playing at a pace that is uncomfortable for you, in particular with Tate. Avante Rice missing inside. That is a poor quality shot. Poked away by Jalen Tate, Oregon basketball out of bounds. And when I say it's a poor quality shot, I mean, fine, you're three feet away, but you're fading backwards, your shoulders are squared up, and you're drifting so hard that it's, it's almost impossible for Rice to make that one. We've seen Tate drive the middle two consecutive possessions and come up with no points. Those are the things that allow Oregon to start getting into better momentum and flow into their offense. Zone look for Illinois. Inside, Moser off the feed from Damian Dotson. First lead for Oregon since they were ahead 9-7, about six and a half minutes into the basketball game. Malcolm Hill long on a three, and Joseph Young clears for the Ducks. Approaching four and a half minutes remaining here in this first half. Damian Dotson, who was terrific in the NCAA tournament in Oregon's run of the Sweet 16 last year. To Mike Moser, who hits on the baseline, and he's starting to heat up. 
nothing run for the Ducks. Illinois takes time. Oregon by four. And right now, the Oregon Ducks executing Roxy against the Illini. They're up by four. Let's show you. We go inside the play. Here's what we're going to see is the ball starts working around the outside against the zone. Go ahead, fellas. Roll this thing out. All right, we freeze it right here. This is where the Occupy, he's going to force him to close out to the corner. And what that does is it opens up this space here. Mosier is going to sit right in the middle of it. No one's around him. That's an easy finish and a great job cutting hard, occupying the zone, and freeing up space for your teammate. That's one thing about Oregon when I watch Dane Altman's teams is how hard they cut, and it seems like every movement has a purpose. Well, it, it, if you cut with a purpose, if you're not open, your teammate's going to be open. And that's what's made this offense so explosive this year for Oregon. Consistently, they're cutting with a purpose, and you see the run over the last four minutes now, a 10-2 run, kind of started with Illinois playing a little bit faster than they really wanted to. Largest lead for Oregon. And a reach in against Jonathan Lloyd, his second foul. As Revante Rice had the basketball. Team foul number six on Oregon. Creates a dilemma for Dana Olden now as Lloyd picks up his second. And depth at the point guard position without Dominic Artis, as we talked about earlier. And it's problematic at times. Young will slide over into that role, and when he slides in that role, takes away and negates his ability to stretch from the outside because he becomes more of a facilitator within the offense. Jaleel Abdul Bassett in a junior from Anchorage, Alaska for Oregon. And an offensive foul, the second illegal screen set by Nana Egwu in this first half. Oregon, 10-2 run. They're up four in Portland. Randy Scott here in the studio coming up on the Land Rover Halftime Report with Miles Simon and myself. A good one between Michigan and top-ranked Arizona. How the Wildcats survived in Ann Arbor and Jameis Winston. It's not a surprise, but it was a landslide. We'll tell you about the voting quirk that got Jameis the Heisman. Back to Roxy and Sean.
All right, Randy, number 15, Oregon leading Illinois, 24-20. 3.43 left in the first half. Help us beat cancer. The Deep Foundation awards 100% of direct donations awarded to cancer research. Foundation endowment covers administrative expenses. Log on to jimmyv.org or call 1-800-4-JIMMY-V. We're, we're all touched by this. I know Miles Simon back in studio. His father's battling it right now, and we send our best to him. My father-in-law, he's been battling cancer for eight years. Didn't have a lot of option, op opportunities to, to get the treatment needed uh, but in the last year there's been so many advances he's part of a trial right now that's really kind of stabilized things for him and that's that's where this kind of money goes it goes to the funding to allow doctors to do what they do best and continue this fight a great producer Tim Sullivan his father dealing with his second battle of pancreatic cancer there's, I don't think there's a family or a person that hasn't at least one, one person affected by that disease it takes so many forms Foul called. Maverick Morgan with his third personal foul. As Illinois has gone over six minutes now with out of field goal. Eight straight points for Oregon. Intent to run for the Ducks to take a four point lead. And Waverly Austin going to the line as Austin Colbert is in, a 6 9 freshman from Chesapeake, Virginia. Well, you're going for deep, John Gross. Deep in the bench. And part of that is because Egwu has two, Iki has two, Bertrand has two. And now three for Morgan. So foul trouble becoming an issue in the final four minutes. And how Coach Gross is going to be able to work this to try to get to the break and keep this game tight is going to be key. Austin, one out of two. Ball stripped by Revante Rice. Taken right back by Mike Moser, but he's called for a reach in his first personal foul. And that one is team foul number seven, putting Illinois into the bonus. He mentioned Rice, a transfer from Drake. He was second team all Missouri Valley Conference back in 2012. And three of the last five games, he's been able to eclipse that 20 point mark. He has become their go to player at the offensive end of the floor. And this is where I think he needs to really earn his points at the free throw line. He did not attempt a free throw versus Dartman. And I don't think there should be a game played that he is on the court where he doesn't get to the free throw line at least once. And that comes with a certain level of aggressiveness. Hitting the first 79% foul shooter. Rice now is six points. And he's the first Illinois newcomer to reach double figures in each of his first 10 games for the Fighting Illini since Kiwan Garris did it back in the early 90s. Impressive run that Rice is on. And that silence is a 9 nothing duck run. Deep three, short from Julio Abdul Bassett, out of bounds to Illinois. Limiting second chance opportunities, only one offensive rebound so far in this game for the Oregon Ducks. So you play defense, you, you take away the transition looks, you force them to shoot up over the top, and then you secure the defensive glass and look to go the other direction. Rice the step back. Rattles in the long two. A much needed made field goal for the Alana. One point lead for Oregon. In a steal. Kendrick Nunn. Illinois looking for the lead. Tracy Abrams the runner. Illinois has the lead back. Timeout Oregon. The toughness of Tracy Abrams getting inside and making the big basket for the fighting Illini. Well, just great post defense by the freshman Kendrick Dunn. And just an excellent job understanding when you're on the block, one of the great things you can do by utilizing your feet. You know, so much has been talked about the freedom of movement, leaning on the offensive player, keeping an elbow there, but. Kendrick Nunn does an excellent job. You're going to see him on the far side of your screen. He breaks contact, uses his feet, gets around, gets the steal, and that's what creates the opportunity. And then Oregon has struggled with this throughout the first half, stopping the ball in transition, keeping the Illini out of the paint. A 6-0 run right now for Illinois to regain this lead. Tracy Abrams with the big basket, the junior from Chicago. 62nd career start today, and a guy that John Gross says, without question, is his toughest player. 
Well, you talk about the experience on this team. A lot of new faces, obviously, in a lot of different roles, but Coach Gross was quick to say uh, that Abrams is one of those, as well as Bertrand, that they're an extension of the coach. And so when they, in these late game situations, when it's tight and they need to execute, he knows that they're going to carry that message out to the floor to the team. Those are inside. Damian Dotson finds some space. Beautiful movement to identify the free area on the floor and knock down the shot. Six points for Dotson along with Moser leading Oregon. Eight points for Rayvante Rice to lead all scorers for the Fighting Illini. Spinning to the basket, and again it's Tracy Abrams getting to the cup. Damian Dotson attacks and hits. Oregon by one, 95 seconds left in the first half. Abrams rattles out the three, Mike Moser the rebound. Inside, losing the handle, Richard Amarty. And Oregon gives it back to Illinois. The points in the paint have been so pivotal here in the first half for the Illini. Watch Abrams, he looks to attack. A beautiful spin move to create space. Nobody there in the rotations over Moser, just a step slow. And Abrams able to finish. Jalen Tate driving. And the kick. Inside. Foul. Austin Colbert to the line for Illinois. And see, great recognition by the Illini that time as Rice drove to the corner, two ducks oh collapsed on him, and then you start the, the skip pass and the quick ball rotation, not trying to dribble, and, and the defense starts getting out of their assignments. They start leaning in different directions, and that allows you to get a piece of the paint, and then the dump, dump down underneath. First free throw attempts for Austin Colbert. And the freshman misses his first career opportunity. Moser heads the bench, picking up his second foul. Elgin Cook back in for Dan Alton. So Moser picks up his second. Jonathan Lloyd with two. And Illinois dealing with some foul trouble of their own in the front court, managing the late stages of this first half. One out of two for Austin Colbert. The three knocked in. Joseph Young. Dotson's been, as we mentioned earlier in this half, he's the finisher. Young is the shooter. And Lloyd is the facilitator that set it up that time. And the quick basket allows Oregon to go two for one. Tracy Abrams to the hole. Gets the roll and one. Well, there's going to have to be a defensive adjustment here in the second half for the Oregon Ducks. If not, if I'm the Illini, I keep turning the corner and looking to get to the rim. Abrams, so good, rejects the screen, absorbs the contact, and then finishes. The defense leans. You see how the defense was trying to cheat over on top of the screen. And when you cheat over, if you're smart, you come back and reject that screen and you finish. Tracy Abrams gets the three-point play. He has ten. Mike Moser coming back, a little offense for defense substitution there. Oregon can play for the last shot of the half. And it should be the final shot of the half. And what an entertaining first half it's been. We thought this one was going to be tight. For the majority of the half, it was played at the Illini's pace. And you look at the numbers, you think about 91 points per game this year for Oregon. They're far below that right now. Illinois at 9 and 1, number 15, Oregon 8 and 0 oh here in Portland. Final eight seconds of the first half. Jonathan Lloyd, a pull up three. Rebonte Rice from past midcourt. And we are tied at 32 as we reach halftime here in Portland. And Illinois taking advantage of their bulk and size inside. Turning the corner, getting in the paint, attacking off the perimeter has been very good for the Illini. And after 20 minutes, we haven't solved anything here. It's tied up at 32. Now let's go to Randy Scott and Miles Simon with the Land Rover halftime report. All right, guys, thank you. Yes, this is the Land Rover Halftime Report alongside Miles Simon. I'm Randy Scott. Let's get to it. Top-ranked Arizona, a real road test. 
Just their second true road game, and they're on the road. Ann Arbor taking on a, a frisky Michigan squad. First half, Glenn Robinson, the third, going to knock down a three. Went for a season-high 20. How nervous are the Wildcats going into the break? I don't think they're that nervous. Arizona played a tough road game at San Diego State already to kind of get them ready for this one. Got 44 points as a team in the second half. Rondé Hollis Jefferson there. Now it's a one-point lead for Arizona. Nick Stauskas, okay. Wolverines up one spike. Albrecht, Michigan just kind of hanging around. Well, the problem with Michigan is that they were just outmatched on the front line. Mitch McGarry, their only true post player, was no match for Ashley, Gordon, and Caleb Tarzuski on the day. 22nd half paint points for Arizona. Last chance for Stauskas doesn't go, and Zona gets out with a 72-70 to 70 lead. You have heard us, now you see us. Miles Simon <laughs> and Randy Scott here on the Land Rover Halftime Report. Let's get to one of the top stories of the night, what's been a surprisingly busy night in college football. This much we knew this less than an hour ago. Jameis Winston, the 79th winner of the Heisman Trophy, now the second straight freshman winner. We went 77 years without a freshman, and Manziel and Winston this year, it was not close. We'll break down the voting in a second, but first, let's hear from Winston, who says this award is about more than just himself. This Heisman isn't just for Jameis Winston. It's for Florida State, and I, I love everybody in here. <laughs> I can't be that much. I mean, I'm so blessed right now, man. It's, it's, it means so much to me. But I got one thing to say. At Florida State, if we're going to do it then, we do it big then. Thank you. All right, speaking of big, I mean, check out the voting totals here. 668 first place votes for Winston, won by nearly 1,500 total points. And we now have word that 115 ballots did not have Winston on it. So 115 voters just left him off of their ballots. And look, that's he's, crazy. Still, he's still won by one of the <laughs> biggest margins in college football history. I mean, just wait to place your vote. Let, that's it. Let justice be served a little bit. Right. The young man was more than deserving. Congratulations to Jameis Winston. Jameis Winston, the 79th winner of the Heisman Trophy. Now, this was the surprise. Mac Brown, according to the Longhorn Network, making it official, he will resign as the head coach for Texas football. He informed the team, informed the recruits, and... He will stay on, though, and coach against Oregon in the Valero Alamo Bowl. But that is it. 16 seasons in Austin, dating back to 1998, won the whole thing in 2005. Mac Brown had this to say in a statement saying, quote, Sally and I were brought to Texas 16 years ago to pull together a football program that was divided. With a lot of passion, hard work, and determination from the kids, coaches, and staff, we did that. We built a strong football family, reached great heights, and accomplished a lot. And for that, I thank everyone. It's been a wonderful ride. Now the program is again being pulled in different directions, and I think the time is right for a change. I hope with new energy we can get this thing rolling again, unquote. All right, much more on the Land Rover Halftime Report coming up after this quick timeout.
and Rover Halftime Report. All right, back with Miles Simon. I'm Randy Scott. A good one down Carolina Way on Tobacco Road. Two of the winningest programs in college basketball history. Number 11, Kentucky. Number 18, North Carolina Tar Heels. Not scared. J.P. Tokido from three and then turning defense into offense and the Tar Heels answering the bell early. Perfect job of just playing the pass away and gets his left hand out there. Makes the easy play. Perfect defensive position. And you say Willie Cauley-Stein does enough in the post, at least off the lobs. You'd like to see more of a post presence. Yeah, he's not a great back-to-the-basket player. He's good off dump-offs and, and lob, lob plays, but they need him to score just one-on-one -on -one in the post at some, some time. All right, James Young making it a five-point game, and then Harrison's going to miss. This will do it. Bryce Johnson, another solid performance from him. Carolina, three of the best wins. Yep. They have the three best wins in the country. Michigan State, Louisville, and now Kentucky. That's it. 3-0 and against ranked teams. Can't do much better than that. All right, earlier, part of our doubleheader on ESPN2, 13th ranked Kansas. Andrew Wiggins, quiet day. This one going down in Kansas City. They kind of host New Mexico, so that makes sense. Kansas, New Mexico, game played in Missouri. There's well, Wiggins. Well, I like the fact that Wiggins, he shot the ball 11 times. He was aggressive. He got to the line six times. He just didn't give him the fall, to fall. But this young man, Joel Embiid, was a stud. 18 points on the day, six rebounds. Wiggins went for 11 points. You told him about Embiid. Nadir Tharp, nine assists. Kansas wins comfortably. Man, did they need that. 80 to 63, your final. Hey, we've got third-ranked Ohio State, that modest crew. Taking on North Dakota State. North Dakota State's already had an upset in the Scott from classic Ooh. off the inbound. <laughs> oh, Sam Thompson. Oh, I love Sam Thompson. He's a high flyer. <laughs> the bottom man for uh, North Dakota State just gets caught looking in that zone. On a poster for all the wrong reasons. There's Kraft inside to LaQuinton Ross, and that makes Kraft Ohio State's all-time assist leader, 74-54. They're still going there in Columbus. Fifth-ranked Michigan State, Tom Izzo called his Spartans soft. After they lost to North Carolina, you know they're they're just really banged up right now. Gary Harris out with the ankle injury, Matt Costello with mononucleosis, Appling with the bad hip, and then Adrian Payne, he's playing with plantar fasciitis. Once they get healthy, I think Michigan State will be fine. Well, Oakland wasn't scared early. We saw Dante Williams with a three, but then Brandon Dawson with a steal and dunk, and Dawson to Travis Trice, and Michigan State close, just a four-point win, but it's a win nonetheless. All right, Oregon's Darian Dotson with eight points, but 15th-ranked Ducks getting. All they can handle from the Illini. We're all square at 32. More on the Land Rover Halftime Report coming up. This Halftime Report is presented by Land Rover. Above and beyond.
This halftime report is presented by Land Rover. Above and beyond. All right, fourth ranked Wisconsin off to its best start in 98 years. Got to go back to 1915. Last time they went 12 and 0. Sam Decker driving the lane. This against Eastern Kentucky. Colonels head coach Jeff Newbauer said it felt like they made every shot. Well, Sam, Sam Decker, he's going to be special for Bo Ryan and the Badgers. He's a guy that can do it all. Will probably be an All-American by the time his career is over. 25-point win for Bo Ryan's club. All right, bragging rights in the Hoosier State on the line. This one neutral site, Indiana and Notre Dame going down in Indianapolis. And early on, Honor Mascara Perea inside. It was a nice pass, though, from Jeremy Hollowell. Yeah, really, Indiana, they, they've lost so much from last year. They're still trying to find themselves. But Notre Dame, this is a great bounce-back win for them after losing to North Dakota State at home home earlier in the week. Can't give up that three right before the first half. 23 points for Jaron Grant. There's Yogi Ferrell. Now it's back to a two-point game, but down the stretch, Irish up two, minute and a half. Eric Atkins, nice win for Notre Dame. Seven-point seven point win. Other top 25 games uh, jumping out to you. Ranked teams holding serve. Uh, best start for UMass in 18 years, but Oklahoma State's only 15-point win. Marcus Smart only 13 points. You concerned at all that the scoring average has gone down? Not worried about Marcus Smart scoring because he only worries about one number, and that's if the number in the win column keeps yeah. going up. He does whatever is needed for the team to win. He lets the game dictate his play. All right, it's going to do it for us. Second half action from Portland it's coming up after this. Here at the half in Portland, number 15, Oregon, against the Fighting Illini at the Bonus Center in Portland. Welcome to Jimmy V Week for Cancer Research on ESPN as we continue our commitment to the V Foundation and Jim Falvano's dream to defeat cancer. Along with Sean Farnham, Roxy Bernstein with the entertaining first half and a tie score 
It's been a battle of wills in the first half. How is Illinois, Sean, winning the pace battle with Oregon? Well, one thing, uh, they're getting back and they're taking away the transition opportunities for the Illini. The other thing is they haven't created transition looks for Oregon. Six turnovers in the first half for Illinois. Only one of them allowed for the runout. On the offensive end, though, it's been about attacking the paint, and in particular, rejecting the on-ball screen and turning that corner, and you're going to watch Abrams do it twice in a row, reject the on-ball screen. You lean ever so slightly, he's going to get to a piece of the paint. Meanwhile, second time again, get past him, reject the screen, and the ability to finish. The perimeter shot has not been good for the Illini in the first half. Their efficiency inside the paint has been. They're 2 of 10 from behind the arc, 10 of 21 inside the arc. Points in the paint have been key. Oregon must make the adjustment here in the second half and turn that water off. Illinois plus five of the boards against Oregon. Oregon shooting 52% for the field, but just two of nine from downtown. And the number two scoring team in the country held a 32 here in the first half. Jonathan Lloyd drives and kicks. Mike Moser can't finish at the rim, but he's fouled and will go to the line. It's facilitating the offense, the playmaking ability. Lloyd looks to attack. So dangerous when he goes north-south. When Third he starts going north, yeah, well, when Lloyd gets going north-south, though, and he turns a corner, it's put so much pressure on the back line of your defense, and that's what created that lane and opportunity for Moser. Moser two of two at the line. We'll see the first broadcast through Jake's works. One more coming. You don't really believe in that. No, they, they don't hear what we're saying. Yeah, I don't think Mike's at the line. Be like, did Roxy just say I've made the first two? <laughs> <laughs> One out of two. Oregon reclaims the lead here. 15 seconds into the second half. Egwu will sit with the three fouls. Maverick Morgan comes in. He has three himself for the fighting Illini. Egwu was trying to stay on the floor and coach him up. Of course, Chris had to yell at him, get off the floor. John Eke breaking the press. Illinois has not given up 70 points all season in a game. In fact, 67 is the most that they've allowed. That was in a loss at Georgia Tech. Oregon needs to pick it up if they're going to get to the 70-point plateau. Waverly Austin the block. Damian Dotson to the basket. What a finisher. Young. The throw ahead from Lloyd flattens out the defense because he gets the ball in a great shooter's hands. And then the quick ball reversal defense scrambling. Dotson finds a lane, and he, when he finds a lane, he can finish. Sophomore from Houston leads Oregon with 10. Rebonte Rice goes underneath. Kick out. Inside, Maverick Morgan off the feed from Tracy Abrams. Oregon quickly pushes, attacks. Joseph Young, the off-balance runner. Two looks in a row, though, where the Ducks offense is starting to pick up pace. That one was a pure transition look. The other one was a secondary break. Tracy Abrams fouled by Waverly Austin. A couple of free throws for the guard for the Illini. Speaking of the pace, Oregon wants to get up and down. Illinois is trying to grind it out here. Are there things that Oregon, Sean, that they can do to try to speed up Illinois? Well, first of all, you, you defend your defensive glass, meaning that you complete the possession by getting clearing the boards. And in the first half, a six to one advantage for Illinois in second chance looks. So that's that's part A of it. B, if you can get transition, deflections, turnovers that lead to runouts, that can speed up your offense. But one of the things Oregon has always done this season is they run well on makes and or misses. And you have to at least give some credit to Illinois. Their point of emphasis, that paranoia that Coach Gross was talking about, they have done a superb job thus far getting back and not allowing the Oregon Ducks to get those throw-aheads that we've seen. Tracy Abrams hits both one-point game. And a foul is called. And Joseph Bertrand just called for his third personal foul at 18-20 remaining. You know, it's a big concern for Coach Gross, as it was in the first half. Uh, the foul issue and you've had lineups out on the floor that haven't played together all season long in the first half and yet they were able to manage it and get to the break but now a couple early fouls the lineup gets shaken up again you need your leaders like Abrams to really step up and assert themselves so Bertrand has three Maverick Morgan playing with three Nana Egwu on the bench with three 
Good work by Nunn down low on the block. Defense defensively playing the post. Up and under. But missing Damian Dotson after the pretty move. Here comes Illinois looking for the lead. Slow it down. Establish your offense. The deflection from Jonathan Lloyd. And it's a foul against Oregon going for the loose ball. And that's on Richard Amarty, his second. For a sloppy pass up top, though. And those are the type of plays that Oregon normally will not just get a deflection, but they're going to get a steal and a run out off of it. Three on the way. Revante Rice hits it. He's in double figures with 11. Illinois by two, their first lead of the second half. Only the third three-pointer made by the Illini. Joseph Young. Stripped inside. Richard Amarty losing the ball. Illinois controls. by the Illini offensively. John Eke missing the three. Richard Amarty, the rebound for Oregon. On the rebound, four guys all the way back defensively for Illinois. That is why Oregon has been unable to break free and really get that momentum and that energy in this building going. Dotson missing a three. And the rebound clear, John Ike and the Illini. Two point lead for Illinois. John Ike again for three. Gets this one. Kind of reminds me of Tyler Gaffney from a year ago from the outside. Able to knock down the perimeter shot. Eight nothing run for the Illini, their largest lead of the game. And a foul away from the ball. And a hold against Illinois. Now the ability to stretch from the outside, just two of ten in the first half. Last year, it was a recipe of success for the Illini. This year, hasn't necessarily been an overall strength, but they're executing well. Iki dials it up in three. Five-point lead.
two for three from behind the arc. Let's show you how they'll be able to find the open shooter. Watch the dribble drive action off the screen. All right, and as we freeze it right here, you're going to see the target hand up. That's going to occupy the defense and vacate the space out here for a wide open Rice three-point shot. Excellent job occupying the defense once again by moving and cutting. We saw Oregon do it in the first half, and now we're seeing an example of it. Now the dribble drive. Watch. One, two, three, four. They're all in this arc. That leaves a wide open shooter on the outside. Excellent job finding clean looks from beyond the arc. Two of three so far in the second half. Nice job by the Illini. So Illinois has taken their largest lead of this matchup. Inside 16 minutes remaining. 42-37, the fighting Illini on an 8 nothing run. They're up five here in Portland on number 15 and unbeaten Oregon. Now this would be a signature win for Illinois in this young college basketball season. And you know, for a win against a ranked opponent, and this is an important stretch for Illinois because after this they've got seven days off, uh, but then they're taking on Missouri in St. Louis. First ranked opponent Illinois has faced this season. Last year they were four and seven against ranked teams as Oregon again comes up empty and John Ike the rebound. And that one just never had the rhythm and flow that you'd expect to see on a loss one. Three of those victories last year for Illinois were top ten wins against Indiana game that you called against Ohio State and against Gonzaga in Spokane at the kennel. What a great game that was against Indiana. Of course they play Indiana on December 31st. That was an electric atmosphere, a great execution with very limited time. To the basket, the dunk for Austin Colbert. 10 nothing run for the Illini. Hit a couple perimeter shots. Now the defense has to react a little bit. They're spaced out. That vacates the area in the center of the floor. Good execution once again by the Illini. Coach Gross told us his offense is evolving. Last year their offense was ahead of their defense. This year their defense ahead of their offense. Joseph Young gets the shooter's touch and the roll. Stops the 10 0 run for the fighting Illini. Ball stripped. Loose. Trying to get timeout. Illinois gets the timeout before the tie up and the hustle from Jalen Tate. Five point lead for Illinois looking for the upset in Portland. Point lead for the fighting Illini as the freshman Jalen Tate creating. Finding his fellow freshman Austin Culver, part of a 10 0 run for the fighting Illini, trying to stun the nation's unbeaten number 15 
Oregon Ducks here in Portland and the mantra for the Fighting Illini, Sean, this season is? Well, they came from uh, their time with the Navy SEALs, and you're going to see it right here. I, I got one. That's uh, I, I grabbed one here. Shoot around. It's E1H. And what does it stand for? What does it take to win? Everyone. Uh, what can destroy the mission? One person. And when your teammates are down, you better help. So it's E1H. It stands for everyone help. And that's been Coach Gross, Gross's me uh, message to his team really from the start of the season. It came from their time that they spent with the Navy SEALs. And Coach Gross last year, very similar, had the, the first date of the NCAA tournament inside these wristbands. And that was the, the focal point of just getting there last year. This year, that they're expecting to be back. And they're expecting to play together and cohesive. And we've seen that so far in this game. And a win here against the Ducks would go a long way to helping Illinois cause as Tracy Abrams knocks down the long two. Illinois has their largest lead. Abrams leads the Fighting Illini with 14. And he's been steady from the field. And not necessarily uh, known as a scorer. You know, efficient in those numbers right now. Came in averaging just about 11 points per game. Joseph Young missing the three. Offensive rebound. Elgin Cook fouled on a putback. A rare offensive rebound for the Oregon Ducks. First on Austin Colbert. And Elgin Cook, 69% foul shooter, will shoot a pair just as sophomore adjacent transfer redshirt at the junior college. He had signed with Iowa State coming out of high school, went to Northwest Florida State Junior College, and is now here playing well, in all the One of the things Cook does do a nice job of is getting to the free throw line. He can draw fouls, and for a team that doesn't necessarily have that great interior presence, and especially a different presence from what we saw a year ago. We think about Arsalan Kazemi. Tony Woods. And Tony Woods, but Kazemi, he's a double-double machine. Now, he didn't even need to shoot the ball to get a double-double. Uh, but this year, they don't have that interior presence. So it's by collective awareness and trying to attack and aggressively get a piece of the paint. Elgin Cook hits both. And those weren't the only guys that they all lost. Kazemi and also losing... Woods, but EJ Single, who was a four-year standout player, really the glue guy for Oregon last season. And Carlos Emery, who was a big spark as well last year for the Ducks. Or for Dina went to the Sweet 16. Well, you know, that's what I love right there. Execution in the open floor. If they're gonna press you, you can you can get up and try to find lanes. If not, and you allow that press to affect you, that's when you get in trouble. Offensive foul in charge of Jason Police. His second foul after Kendrick Nunn giving Illinois a seven-point lead again. Oregon's had a tough time getting into rhythm against this tough-nosed Illinois defense. We're playing with not only just physical toughness, but mental toughness in this game. I mean, the carryover from the scout, we saw it immediately this morning when they took the fourth shoot around. This was a very focused group. This is a business trip for Illinois. Door cut for Rice. Illinois by nine. Largest lead for the Illini, approaching 13 minutes to play. Dana Altman wants time. You space the floor. You have nobody inside the paint. The defense extends out. You're smart. You make an intelligent cut. The backdoor cut was sensational, and it's a great feed and an easy finishing. What you're going to see, watch as this rolls out, and we play this, fellas. You're going to see nobody inside the paint. Let's freeze it right here before it goes. There's nobody inside here. Everybody is outside the paint. So the defense is extending. They're cheating up on the wing. You take a step out, go right to the back door. Beautiful cut, and Rice set him up and broke him down. Part of a 16-4 run. Illinois leading it by nine. And Oregon in trouble. They're 8-0 coming into this one. And they average 91.4 points a game, Sean. Number two in the country. They're being stifled right now by the Illini. Their will is winning this battle. They have not allowed anybody to score 70 points this year. And right now, Oregon is not on pace to get to that 70-point plateau. And their execution and that defensive awareness in transition forcing the Ducks to shoot up over the top, contested looks, and then securing the rebound. And those are the three areas you can really stifle a team. And 
Illinois has done it throughout. Still lots of time to go here at the Moda Center. And the Big Ten needs a win here against the Pac-12 team after Arizona went into Ann Arbor and took down Michigan at Chrysler Arena. And there is a big basket by Elgin Cook for the Ducks. That was one of the easiest looks we've seen by Oregon here in the second half. Right out of the timeout. No surprise, Dana Altman does such a nice job giving his team to execute out of timeouts. Tracy Abrams drives. Shot blocked by Mike Mosier. Here comes Oregon with Jonathan Lloyd. Jason Calise to the basket. His first points is senior, the transfer from Detroit, and Oregon is close within five. Kicking violation against the Ducks. First a timeout, they'll take it. Timeout, Illinois. Top women's basketball programs in the nation headline ESPN's primetime coverage of the Jimmy V Classic Tuesday at 7 ESPN 2. Brianna Stewart, the number one Huskies, take on Elizabeth Williams and the number two Blue Devils. Then on ESPN, the Panthers face the Bearcats at 7 at 9. Number 19, Florida, against number 16, Memphis. The Jimmy V Classic presented by Corona Tuesday on ESPN and ESPN 2. All games also live on Watch ESPN. A couple things that stand out to me when you look at that lineup of games is one that'll be Pittsburgh's best test so far this college basketball season taking on Cincinnati so far you look at the season for the Pitt Panthers 234th in the nation in strength of schedule yes they're undefeated but that needs to improve and they're going to get tested they don't play a ranked team until they play Syracuse inside ACC play meanwhile Josh Passman what a win he got over Oklahoma State a ranked opponent Key for Josh, key for that program moving forward. Another chance against Florida. Win of the Old Spice Classic, Memphis in Orlando. And they knocked off Oklahoma State, Marcus Smart. On the drive, Ravante Rice, kick out Tracy Abrams. Better defensive intensity so far in this possession. To the rim for Nana Agu, broken up. Oregon looks to push it. And that was intensity and toughness at the defensive end by Oregon. Jonathan Lloyd gets it back. Damian dots into the basket. And he crashes into Maverick Morgan, the offensive foul, rather into John Eakey. And a charge is called against Damian Dotson. Oregon struggling to find their rhythm. Illinois up five in Portland.
from where you are to where you want to be. You have to have an enthusiasm for life. You have to have a dream, a goal. You have to be willing to work for it. Help Us Beat Cancer, the V Foundation awards 100% of direct donations awarded to cancer research. Foundation Endowment covers administrative expenses. Log on to JimmyV.org or call 1-800-4-JIMMY-V to donate. Jim Valvano was remarkable in that, that run to the NCAA championship back in 1983. Is that run started right down the road from right here in Portland. First and second round victories at Gill Coliseum in Corvallis, the home of Oregon State. Well, of course, the V Foundation just continues to do so many great things and opening up doors and reminding people that cancer takes many different forms, uh, but it impacts and affects us all. I'll tell you this partner right now, Illinois does not have a turnover in the second half. And fast break points are tied at two apiece. So you're talking about an Oregon Ducks team averaging 90 points with only two fast break points so far in almost 30 minutes of play. And the Illini, 7 of 11 for the field, make it 8 of 12 here in the second half as they push the lead out to 7. They are executing and they are spacing the floor, turning the corner, being aggressive against the Oregon Ducks. Elgin took, put off of the baseline. Mike Moser for three, that's short. And Tracy Abrams clears for Illinois. Face the floor once again if you're Illinois. You're controlling and dictating the tempo in every way, shape, and form in this game. Shot clock at eight. Joseph Bertrand for Abrams. A long three. Kept alive on the offensive end. Out of bounds. Illinois basketball on the baseline. Even though I think you can get a much higher quality shot than the one the Illini took, you never got a sense of any distress as the shot clock was winding down or any panic. Levante Rice rattles out the three. Damian Dotson off the deflection controls. Mike Moser moves in. In his own miss. Only the second time in the game, Oregon's been able to get a second chance opportunity and, and convert. Tracy Abrams, some indecisiveness there for the junior point guard. A lot of space around Abrams, and for some reason we've seen a hesitation there that we haven't seen all game long. Be aggressive, attack, look to make the defense step, and if they do, do what you've done the entire game. Take it back out, make the defense scramble and rotate. Let's we'll see if Oregon can capitalize on this. This game has just been played at such a slow pace. And Oregon right now is going to really have to turn it on to try to get to that 70-point plateau, something that no one has done against this Illini defense all year long. Right into the hands of Illinois with this tempo is a foul call against the Illini after they, at the other end, committed their first turnover of the second half. Fourth foul of Maverick Morgan with 9.14 remaining. Five against the Illini here in the second half. Points allowed by Illinois with 67 and a loss at Georgia Tech. Joseph Bertrand, the steal and flush. You telegraph a pass, you shoot the passing lane, and you finish at the other end. Six Illinois steals now. That results in a fast break dunk. Elgin Cook to Jason Police. Who gets the three from the corner? His first made three-point shot of the game. 
Police shooting at 55% from downtown this season coming in. Bertrand has it stripped by Elgin Cook in a steal. Damian Dotson. Inside, Cook! opportunity to get a run out and finish the Oregon Ducks have obviously responded but watch the telegraph pass here you, you throw it the length east west across the court Bertrand is there able to finish but the Oregon Ducks have answered a nice job by Mike Moser and a great finish by Cook Six point game. went up nine 50 to 41 Oregon on an 11-4 run to close within two. And it's going to spark off the bench. Elgin Cook, Jason Police, part of this run for Dana Altman at Oregon. Well, the first time all game long that this crowd has gotten in it for the Oregon Ducks. I mean, a good following here, by the way, for Illinois. They traveled very well. They have traveled very well this game. But obviously, you're in Oregon, there's going to be more Ducks fans in the first time really all game long that there's a little bit of a buzz in this building. Last year, Illinois traveled to the Pacific Northwest, came away with a huge non-conference win at Gonzaga. On a neutral floor, technically, here in Portland, they're trying to hand number 15 Oregon their first loss of the year. And Tate, the young freshman, has done such a good job all season long managing the game, not turning the ball over. We'll see if he's able to continue that. He's in there right now with the ball up top. Shot clock at 10. Jalen Tate drives, kicks, Ravante Rice from the corner, missing the long two. Elgin Cook the rebound. Elgin. Oregon can tie. But Joseph Bertrand to steal. These long passes. Jonathan Lloyd trying to do a little bit too much on that one. But that was a good possession this last time for Illinois. They just missed the shot. But a good job breaking down the defense. Slowing down the game again, trying to diminish the number of opportunities Oregon can have to score. It's been the purpose from the very start till now. Oregon with the takeaway. Jason Police. Drives. We're tied. Police with seven all in the second half. John Eakey from the corner, rattles out the three. Oregon looking for the lead. Joseph Young has his shot blocked out of bounds. It stays with the Ducks. Tied at 54, 634 remaining. The Heisman Trophy was handed out tonight. We preview the Wooden Award straight ahead.
Sean Elliott, the 1989 Wooden Award winner, led the Arizona Wildcats in scoring in each of his four seasons and won three Pac-10 titles along the way. He is to this day the all-time leading scorer in Arizona history. John R. Wood, Player of the Year Award. There are the candidates for the Pac-12, a couple from UCLA, and the freshman Aaron Gord from Arizona on that list. And Jaheim Carson, quite possibly, between him and Jazz Williams, two of the quickest guards in all of college basketball. Jazz Williams from UMass, but Jaheim Carson will end from end. Does a good job facilitating the offense, a better distributor of the basketball, an elite score inside the paint. He had 40 earlier this year against UNLV. 14 of his 16 made shots were inside the paint and layups. Tie game, 6.34 to play. Oregon takes the lead, Mike Moser. How many times have they come out of the timeout and executed Chris Brook? That's a sign of great coaching, and Dana Altman is one of the best in the Pac-12. Dana yeah, Altman looking like he wanted to play some defense himself right there. Tracy Abrams losing it. Jonathan Lloyd on the counterattack. Joseph Young finishes. 11 straight points for Oregon. And what you see when the offense starts going, the energy in the building starts flowing, all of a sudden the bounce in the duck step at this end of the floor has increased and the turnovers have started for the Illini. Where do the Illini need to go right now? They need to go to the paint. They, they have not scored with the efficiency that we saw in the first half getting to the rim. Look for those on-ball screen situation. Abrams was so good in the first half, rejecting those on-ball screens and finishing. We haven't seen a lot of that here in the second half. Jason Police fouled on the drive by Kendrick Nunn, his second. Has not put Oregon into the bonus. That's their sixth team foul. Playoff race heating up. Joe Flacco and the Ravens head of the Motor City to face Calvin Johnson and the Lions. Coverage begins with Monday night countdown at 6.30. Baltimore, Detroit, Monday at 8.25 Eastern on ESPN and also live on Watch ESPN. Reggie Bush has been uh, tweaked that calf last week. You need him to play, don't you? I do. I'm in the playoffs myself for fantasy football. Reggie needs to go on Monday. He needs to play big. While you're lobbying, I need Ray Rice. How's that? That's fine. Right now, the Illini faithful would like to see their version of Ray Rice get going offensively. Stripped, and Illinois takes control. That on ball screen. Here's the situation, and Abrams is giving it up. Here is Rebonte Rice to the basket. Tipped in, winged off. Offensive goaltend against Nana Edward. He was a half a second too early. That ball was coming off. You guys see the drive and still right there, see right, literally just bounced off the iron. It was still over the 10. If he waits a half a second longer, that ball is off the rim. He's able to knock it in. Big game Dave. Dave Hall on the call. And he's done a great job at his crew, Mike Cyphers and Randy Hyerman, even before this game started here tonight. Jonathan Lloyd, short on a three. John Eakey clears for the Illini. Rice inside the tip in. Some good toughness by Rivanta Rice underneath. Staying with the first miss. 17 for Rayvante Rice. Illinois within two as we approach four minutes remaining at the Moda Center. And that's not the 11 0 run. Those are losing control. And now Illinois a chance to tie or take the lead with a three. And an angle for three. The lead for the Illini. 25% <laughs> from behind the arc on the season. On the road in a neutral site.
able to knock it down from beyond the arc to give him the lead once again. And just his third three-pointer of the season, Nana Egwu steps outside, and the 6'11 junior from Chicago hits the huge shot to give Illinois back the lead. Well, the dribble drive action, the defense definitely stepping to, and you read the scouting report, you're thinking, okay, you know what, we'll give that up. 25% Coach Gross is saying, you know what, I got faith in all my guys. And he really does. And you see the intensity. He, he immediately focuses on, hey, great shot. Let's buckle down and play some defense. What he's been able to accomplish at Illinois. And, and last season, obviously, being there for that magical moment when they knocked off number one Indiana. It was a... The, the season was on the brink in that moment where it could have gone the opposite direction, but that win stabilized the Illini, solidified the Illini, and they made their run into the NCAA tournament. This season, so many new faces, so many different roles, and yet this team continues to come together, and you see the pieces and how they compete. They're going to figure into the Big Ten once again. Damian Dotson missing from the corner. Last touch by Illinois, Oregon basketball. We've got a good one going down to the wire. Number 15, Oregon, in danger of suffering their first loss to the Illini. The journey to the tourney continues on ESPN when Jordan Adams and the Bruins head to the Garden to take on Jabari Parker and the Blue Devils. ESPN's journey to the tourney. UCLA against number eight Duke Thursday at 7.30 on ESPN. Also live on Watch ESPN and a great freshman season. Underway for Jabari Parker and those numbers, extremely impressive. Extremely polished, well-rounded, and right now, we talk about the Wooden Award and we mentioned that, you know, this th that young man figures in with so many of the great players around college basketball. We all, as much as we focus on the freshmen, keep in mind, Doug McDermott, Marcus Smart, Shabazz Napier, and what he's been able to do for UConn, a great start to the season for him. Jabari Park is right up with him. Oregon down one with the ball. Elgin Cook seesaws Oregon back in front. Where's the difference been in the second half? 20 points in the paint here in the second half for the Oregon Ducks. They had 12 in the first half. They have 20 already, and we've still got three minutes left to go. Yeah. Illinois throws it away, looking for Nana Edwu inside. Mosier for three. Got it.
His first three, he is now one of five from downtown Oregon by four. Levante Rice looking for contact. Here comes Oregon. remaining here in Portland. Stripped and stolen by Revante Rice, who attacks. And a foul against Jason Polista goes tumbling into the stanchion on the baseline. Communication going on, but how about watch this in the stack set, out of bounds underneath. We've seen great execution out of our go ahead and roll it out, guys. And what you're going to see as the breakout occurs, freeze it right there. Here's the, he's going to have to run and close out. And on that closeout, it gives him the lane to blow by on the rip through and finish inside the paint. A good job by Cook. Tempers flaring a little bit, but nothing coming from it. And now Joseph Young trying to fire up the partisan Oregon crowd. In Portland, about two hours up the road from the University of Oregon campus in Eugene. And the officials are going to go to the scorer's table to what I assume is look to see if there's any ex any extracurriculars that they might need to address. The At call was a foul on Jason Police sending Ray Vonte Rice to the foul line, and it was just a common foul handed out. Correct. And what happened after that, though, was Ravante Rice follows through the foul, and bodies start to go, you see, into the... Thing, a little bit of a push there from behind, but it's not like it was anything malicious. And then after that, you've got to watch and people start coming in. I think it's much to do about nothing, to be honest with you. And there's a bump by there's Elgin a Cook. Yeah. Seemed a bit premeditated there for Cook as he was looking well, to get in the middle of everything. Yeah, but at the end of the day, I would be surprised if this officiating crew added anything to the mix. Here's the, here's the play underneath. Our camera gets knocked over. And then there's a push right there coming through. So the call on the floor was a common foul by Jason Police, his third, and two free throws for Ray Bonte Rice. All right, and the officials come over, Dave Hall comes over and says uh, they wanted just to make sure there was no additional contact, any extracurricular, just as we discussed. They looked at it one time, just as we showed you. And it was clear as day there, there wasn't anything that you're going to award an additional penalty on. 15th foul in Oregon. Rice, 2 of 2 at the line. Shooting 2 as the Illini are 8 of 9 to the strike in this game. Rice hits the first. He leads Illinois with 18. And he has led Illinois in scoring in each of the last five games coming into this tilt. On the road games so far this season, averaging over 23 points per game. They might need him to get to that mark, right? even with a minute 50 left. They're down by three. Now Oregon's going to be the team that's patient in their half-court set. They're okay taking some time off the clock. Coming up next, 30 for 30, the Youngstown boys tonight. Jonathan Lloyd on the drive. Has his shot blocked. Picked up, Elgin Cook puts it in. Bertrand to the basket. Loose, picked up, Joseph Bertrand falling down, gets it in. The coach tells him to get back and just get a stop. You can't allow second chance opportunities. Illinois gave up one on the last time. You get a stop, you can better grab the defensive rebound if you want to give yourself a chance here. Jonathan Lloyd massaging the clock. Lloyd with five. The long two. Hit. You gotta go, and you gotta make a quick one here. Bertrand, timeout, Illinois. Timeout, Illinois. 
What a shot, though, by Jonathan Lloyd. A 9-3 run by the Oregon Ducks, and we showed you in the first half the different roles of these guards. There's no question Jonathan Lloyd is the playmaker. He's smart. Keeps his eye, knows exactly how much time he has left on the shot clock. Sizes it up, steps into his mid-range jump shot where he's much more confident and drops it in. There was a time last year about the midway point when Dominic Gardas was out with a stress fracture. And Jonathan Lloyd was thrust in the role of having to play nearly 40 minutes, 40 minutes a night as a point guard. His confidence struggle, but then late in the year, something that clicked for him he would go on to be the most outstanding player in the pac-12 tournament and that confidence is carried over into this season dana altman told us when he looks back at that stretch run where jonathan lloyd stepped in for dominic artist and the team kind of struggled a little bit that he felt that it was on him and not on jonathan lloyd that he dumped so much on his shoulders but lloyd was able to respond and lloyd told us that when the Oregon ducks had lost three consecutive games he called his dad his dad said his son you played the game basketball for how long? How many times have you taken a loss? Just play your game and do what you do best. And he's, he credits his dad really for calming him down and getting him refocused to play at the high level we saw at the end of the year a season ago and what we've seen so far in this young college basketball season almost the third in. Dana Altman's first recruit when he got the Oregon job was Jonathan Lloyd. And now he puts Oregon up five. 21.4 to play as Oregon tries to run their record to 9-0. Tracy Abrams, foul, will shoot two. Elgin Cook called for his second. 17.4 seconds remain. A good job going towards the basket, drawing contact, stopping the clock. Obviously, you have to make both here. You play for the steal immediately. If you don't get it, you have to foul. Abrams, three of three at the line. Hits the first. One more coming. As the Illinois team MVP as a freshman. Last year was ninth in the Big Ten in assists. And he pulls the Illini within three. Good substitution, bring in the two freshmen, athletic, both can guard quicker players. It also allows you to set up your press and doesn't allow the Ducks to just take the ball out of the net and try to inbound it when you're scrambled. Illinois out of timeouts. Next foul will put Oregon into the bonus for a one and one. Ozer, nearly a five second call, gets the timeout. Right, and see, that's why it was a great substitution by Coach Gross. The little things that maybe you overlook down the stretch. You can get caught up in the heat of the moment. And making a free throw and immediately figuring out, hey, we got to get in the press. But you send a couple to the table. Now, all of a sudden, it allows you to set up your press. And when you get a little bit more athletic, a little quicker, no subs were allowed to do that. You maybe create a turnover opportunity. Almost did that time for Coach Gross. Oregon with 67 points. It ties the most Illinois has given up in a game this season. And the three-guard attack and spreading the floor and creating space has been the key for the Ducks. Well, the playmaking ability on the outside has been the key to Oregon, not just tonight, but it's been all season long. The playmaker, you see him facilitate the offense drive, make the back line of the defense step, and then Young, he's the shooter. So you got the playmaker, you got the shooter, then you need the finisher. And Dotson's been the one guy, really, when the offense is struggling in that middle portion of the first half, Dotson was the guy that was able to knock it down. You see the numbers and the efficiency, each and every one of them shooting 50% or better from the field. And that's the key to the Oregon Ducks offense. And a big shot made by Jonathan Lloyd, but they've also been getting a spark off the bench. Elgin Cook has really given the Ducks a lift here tonight. There's no question. Uh, he has been the guy that has been aggressive and attacking the rim. And that's been important. The points in the paint, as I pointed out, in the first half, it was heavily on the side of the Illini. In the second half, that has completely flipped. 22 points in the paint in the second half by the Oregon Ducks. That is what has allowed them to get this lead. Again, Illinois out of timeouts. Oregon has one left at their disposal. 
Jonathan Lloyd fouled immediately by Jalen Tate. And Lloyd will shoot a one and one, an 84% foul shooter. Obviously, just one make here makes it a four point game. There's still plenty of time to elongate this game if you're the Alana. But you've got to be able to score in a hurry off of whatever Jonathan Lloyd does now here at the free throw line. The numbers throughout the course of this season plus six points per game, plus almost five assists per game. His field goal percentage up. He's up at the free throw line, by the way, 17% from where he was a year ago. They need that right now. One and one. One more coming. And all the moving his players out of the lane. So now it makes it a two possession game. Five point lead. Tracy Abrams over to John Eakey. Illinois needs to get a shot up quick. Stripped by Jonathan Lloyd. Lloyd lays it in. What a finish for Jonathan Lloyd. The shots, the free throws, the defense, and the win for the Oregon Ducks. Number 15, Oregon remains unbeaten. They move to 9-0, their best start since they began the 2006-2007 season, led by Aaron Brooks at 13-0 in a team that made the Elite Eight. This team, their offensive ability has been impressive all season long, but their ability to respond from the defensive intensity of the Illinois tonight has been impressive for me, and to see them get this win here in Portland. So the Ducks knock off Illinois. For my partner, Sean Farnham, and our great ESPN crew, Roxy Bernstein saying so long for Portland. Once again, the final, number 15, Oregon, 71, Illinois, 64. Coming up next, 30 for 30, Youngstown Boys, presented by Buick.